If I had the choice to become fluent tomorrow, would I take it? A message to younger Emma. You may sound a little silly when you're trying to figure out these sounds for the first time, but when you do, that win is all yours. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Emma. And in this video, I wanted to share with you guys an approach that could help you set yourself up to developing good pronunciation in your target language, especially if you're studying by yourself. This video isn't so much about developing a native speaker accent, but more so giving you the tools for effective communication. Like even if you think about native accents in English, like the American or the British accents, clearly they do sound different, but at the end of the day, you can effectively communicate with either of them. So a bit of background information on me. I am currently a language tutor, tutoring English, and I'm also an avid language learner. Vietnamese is my mother tongue and I acquired English as my second language. So those are the only two languages that I am genuinely fluent in. Besides that, when I was younger, I also studied some French and right now I am learning Korean and Mandarin. I'm sure I still have some accents in any of those languages at varying levels. But what I'm trying to say is when I speak with clear pronunciation, most people usually don't have too hard of a time understanding what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Uh Je trouve que ces jours-là, il y a beaucoup de bonnes ressources sur Internet, comme des vidéos, des cours, ben, des blogs, etc. Alors, profitons-en au maximum. Et c'est parti! There are a total of six steps to this approach. First is to learn to read and pronounce the phonetic alphabet of your language, if you have one. Second is to identify the sounds that don't already exist in the other languages that you know and to focus a little bit more on them. Third is to listen to music, podcasts, movies as input so that you slowly attune yourself to the language. And of course, after input, you want to have some output. And for this section, we want to read aloud passages to really practice our pronunciation. Next is to read aloud in front of a native speaker or someone else who can check your pronunciation and give you tips to improve upon it. In this segment, I will also talk about two tips that my Korean tutor gave me that really helped improve the way that I pronounce in Korean. And last but not least is to follow a pronunciation plan if your language has a lot of irregularities or exceptions. Okay, so if your target language has a phonetic alphabet, I would highly recommend that you learn to first read and pronounce the individual letters, and secondly, to pronounce the common vowel and consonant combos. These are going to be your building blocks to clear pronunciation. For instance, when you're learning Korean, you have the alphabet called Hangul. And at the beginning, it might look kind of daunting, but in actuality, it only consists of 24 letters. It's very easy to learn. You can probably nail it in about 30 minutes. So I think it's very worthwhile to learn how to read Hangul from the get-go instead of falling into the habit of relying on romanization. Guys, please entertain me with this exercise. How would you pronounce this? Probably something like Nuna Neomu Yapao is what you would pronounce if you solely relied upon romanization. But if you took that 30 minutes and learned a little bit of Hangul, you could easily pronounce it as Duna Nomu Yeppo. Another reason to learn to read and pronounce the phonetic alphabet in your target language is so that you don't apply previous knowledge or approaches from other languages that you may already know to this new target language. For instance, this word is present in both Spanish and French. This in Spanish is pronounced as 
que, por qué. So when you're learning French, you might be tempted to read it as parce que, but in fact, it is pronounced parce que. Por qué, parce que, que, que. Similarly, if you're learning Mandarin, you're probably introduced to pinyin, which is a romanized system to help language learners like us. Here's another exercise. Back in college, I had a Chinese friend who went by this name. In pinyin, her name would be written like this. So, with our English-speaking brains, how do you think it would be pronounced? For the longest time, I pronounced it as "siki," "siki." But after learning pinyin, I realized that it is in fact pronounced "siqi," "siqi." So, sorry, Joyce. At the beginning, even if this task may feel daunting. I promise you, it will only take you about 30 minutes, an hour, two hours tops, to nail these systems, and the return on time investment is huge. One, you'll be able to communicate more clearly, and two, you also save yourself time from fixing these mistakes later on down the line. Step number two is to identify sounds that don't already exist in other languages that you may already know, and you want to pay a little bit more attention to these sounds. Maybe the sound is produced somewhere in your mouth cavity, or somewhere up here in your nasal cavity. And if you have a hard time recreating those sounds, it could be useful to watch videos on tongue placement, as well as where the sound is coming from, and that might give you more concrete pointers to recreate those sounds yourself. Much softer, more gentle. Si, 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 si. And don't be shy to practice these sounds. I remember when I was 10, maybe learning French for the first time, I was introduced to the umlaut u, the u sound in French. And at first, I was really shy to pronounce that u properly in front of my classmates, so I would just pronounce it as u the entire time. Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Est-ce que tu veux du beurre? Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Est-ce que tu veux du beurre? It's much easier for other people to understand what I'm trying to say. Likewise, when I had like two Mandarin lessons back in high school, I was introduced to the four tones: ma, 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 ma. And at that time, I was really shy of pronouncing the fourth tone properly in front of my classmates. I really felt like I was doing the most, but I wanted to come off as like you know a chill, a chill person, not trying too hard. So the fourth tone, ma, took a lot of courage for me to pronounce. But I've learned from that mistake. So a message to younger Emma: you know what? You may sound a little silly, a little funny when you're trying to figure out these sounds for the first time, but when you do, that win. Is all yours. I'm curious. Do any of you have the same thought process, or is it just me? Step number three is to have input. That could be listening to easy podcasts, the radio, watching movies, listening to songs, whatever it may be that will pique and hold your interest. The more you are exposed to these sounds, the more you will become attuned to these sounds, and the more likely you are to be able to recreate it. Because if you haven't heard those sounds before, it's unlikely that you will be able to recreate it on your own. For this step, it also helps to listen more actively instead of just playing this in, in the background mindlessly while you're doing different tasks that require more of your focus. I would suggest setting some time aside to just actively listen to this material, and you'll get more out of the same amount of time listening to it. At this stage, I also quite enjoy mimicking along with what I'm listening to, just as a little extra activity. Beijing and Sydney's But it's really up to you. You can choose to mimic or shadow along with the audio, or not. And just listen and just enjoy. Of course, after input is output in the form of reading aloud text passages. When you're just learning a new language, you probably don't have enough vocab or sense of the language to produce 
like a good amount of speech on your own. So it's harder to practice pronunciation, especially if you're just speaking in very broken fragments. When you have a text passage to read from, it takes away the burden of thinking of what you want to say, and you just have to focus on your pronunciation, on producing the correct sounds. 我在一所英国国际学校上学，我们学校一共有一千两百多个学生。教学教学语言是英语。This activity will help you determine how well you can look at strings of words and then produce the corresponding sounds from them. The next step is to continue reading aloud from these text passages, but now you want to get someone. Maybe a native speaker or someone that you trust with the language to listen to you read aloud and give you feedback on your pronunciation. It could be a language buddy that you can find on language exchange websites. For this step, in my opinion, I do believe that it is worthwhile to invest in a tutor, even if it's just a one lesson type thing. Language teachers are accustomed to spotting these pronunciation mistakes. And also to give you actionable steps that you can put into practice to quickly improve upon these points, if you will. Someone who's not as accustomed to this process might be able to tell you, you know what, something in the way that you're speaking is off, but I can't really tell you what it is. But a tutor would more likely be able to identify those mistakes for you so that you can fix them more quickly. You in the house say Chinese? 我跟妈妈说汉语，跟爸爸说法语。哎，你得去放风了。嗯 ，OK， 没问题。嗯，今天给晒了温度不起劲呢。再来练练松松脚。嗯，你会说什么外语？今天陪过奶奶进来，陪过公公过奶奶，没有外语。今天啊，比如你们讲起点，反正没有外语嘛，为外语的好些。嗯，奶奶，你你会说什么外语？奶奶，别说了。只能念外语。Okay. Anh nghĩ là nên thế là nó sẽ giúp mình lúc、mm. mà thi hát ca dễ hơn nữa. Usually, when I'm learning a foreign language, I like to perform my language in front of my mom, even if she might not understand what I'm saying. Half a year into learning Korean, I found a tutor, and we studied together for about ten lessons. And in our first lesson, my tutor had me read aloud a passage, and he fixed two points for me. And after that lesson, I performed Korean again for my mom, and she was like, "Emma, I still don't understand what you're saying, but you sound a lot more legit right now than you did before the lesson." In Korean, you might have noticed that there is a certain rhythm, a certain pitch pattern. In a word, first syllable is always lower pitch, second syllable high, low high, low, and that resets for every new word. In that sentence, so here are all your consonants: the aspirated consonants, tense consonants, hio, shio. No matter where they are in a word, will always be pronounced with a higher pitch. As for the rest of the consonants, if they are the first syllable in a word or other odd-numbered syllable, they will be pronounced at a lower pitch. 산과 바다가 된 이야기. This word will follow the pitch pattern rule to the T. Padaga, tun, iyagi, and then the first word because it starts with a shiot. Even though it's the first syllable, it will be pronounced at a higher pitch. So instead of sangua, it will be sangua. Sangua padaga, tun, iyagi, and you just apply that cadence to the rest of whatever you're reading. The second point that my tutor fixed for me was that a hit coming before or after any of these consonants will always make that consonant become aspirated, to have air in it. I used to pronounce these words as iroke, kuroke, krotamion. Just applying this simple rule, I changed iroke to iroke, krotamion to. These were the two overarching mistakes that my tutor fixed for me in my very first lesson, and I am forever grateful. So, Anghui, if you're watching, 제실수를고치는방법을알려주셔서감사합니다
Last but not least, you can follow a pronunciation plan, especially if your language has a lot of irregularities. For me, I study Korean with a textbook, and at the end of every chapter, there is a built-in section for pronunciation rules. I'm about two years into studying Korean with these textbooks, and I'm still learning and implementing new pronunciation rules. So although I might not nail all of these from the very beginning, I feel like that's, that's the beauty in the study process, right? Is to learn new things, implement them, and grow from them. I was just sitting and thinking to myself the other day, if I had the choice to become fluent in Korean or Mandarin tomorrow, would I take it? And at first, not gonna lie, it sounds very, very tempting. Like I could just be fluent just like that tomorrow and call it a day. But on second thoughts, I feel like that would take away all the fun in the learning process in and of itself. Like all that discovery, learning something new, finding a pattern that helps you string everything else together and that satisfaction would all be lost if I was just fluent like that. So if I had a choice, I'd probably still choose to continue learning like I am now and enjoy the ride as I keep on progressing. What would you choose? Would you choose to be fluent tomorrow? Or would you choose to continue with your study process? Let me know in the comments down below. So from here, the world is basically your oyster. You now have all your Lego blocks that will help you build out good pronunciation habits so that you can communicate effectively in the long run. I am shaking a little bit, I'm a little hungry, so I guess it's time to wrap this video up. I really hope that you're able to enjoy this learning process, this process of discovering a new language and of course a new culture. And just know that with any problem that may arise, there is always an optimal solution waiting to be discovered and waiting to be implemented by you. You guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!